ICT NCERT presents audiobook Mathematics for Economics. Page 32. Module 7. Functions of one variable. 7.1. Functions of one variable and their graphs. Among other things, your marks in a subject depend upon the average number of hours you study that subject every day. The general price of commodities depend on the price of diesel, which is an important part of cost of transportation. In the first example, your marks are the dependent variable and the average hours studied is the independent variable. In the second example, the general level of price is the dependent variable and the price of diesel is the independent variable. The relationship of dependence of one variable on the other variable is called a function. If every value of the independent variable is related with a unique value of the independent variable, it means that the relationship will not be function if any value of the independent variable gets related to either no value or more than one value of the dependent variable. Usually, the dependent variable is denoted as y and the independent variable as x. A function can generally be expressed as y equals fx, where x is in brackets, where fx is some expression of the variable x. Here, fx is a rule of dependence or a mathematical formula which generates a unique value of the dependent variable for every value of the independent variable. Some examples of functions are y equals 3x plus 5, y equals x square, y equals x cube plus 1 by x, or y equals 1. The real values of x for which the formula fx give a meaningful real value of y form a set called the domain of the function. For example, y equals x cube plus 1 by x has no meaningful value when x equals 0. Therefore, the domain of this function is the entire set of real numbers except 0. Function can also be understood as a machine where the variable x is the input variable into the machine and the variable y is the output variable out of it. A function may be expressed in either of the following ways. 1. As a mathematical formula relating the values of dependent variable y with the values of the independent variable x. For example, y equal to 3x, y equal to 2x square minus 3x plus 5, or y equal to 1 by x, etc. 2. As a table, mentioning values of x in first horizontal row and values of y in the second horizontal row. For example, y equal to 3x could also be expressed with the help of a table. In the table, we have 2 rows and 10 columns. In row 1, we have the following values x blank minus 3 minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 blank In row 2, we have the following values y equal to 3x blank minus 9, minus 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, blank. Page 33. Figure 17, function in one variable. In this figure, we have a two-dimensional plane with x and y axis. Both the axis have been divided into 10 parts, running from minus 5 to plus 5. The pair of two numbers in any vertical column of the table 
may also be represented as a point in the two-dimensional plane. The x-coordinate of this point would be the value of the input variable x and y-coordinate of this point would be the value of the output variable y. For example, minus 3, comma, minus 9, 0, comma, 0, 1, comma, 3, and 2, comma, 6, etc. are some points from the table. A connection of all such points in a two-dimensional plane is called the graph of the function y equal to 3x, as we can understand from the figure 17. Thus, any function y equal to fx may also be expressed as a graph in two-dimensional plane, that is, as a connection of all points x, y, where y equal to fx. Different type of functional formulas will have graphs of different shapes. We are mainly interested in graphs of following four types of functions. 7.1.1 Linear Functions Function is called linear when the relationship between y and x is a linear equation of the form y is equal to mx plus c. The coefficients m and c could be any real numbers including 0. y is equal to 2x y is equal to minus x by 2 minus 3 and y is equal to 0 are few examples of linear functions. We have already discussed in the graph of linear equation y is equal to mx plus c that it has the shape of a straight line with a slope equal to m and y-intercept equal to c. Page 34 The key characteristic of a linear function or its graph is the fact that the ratio of change in y to the change in x, that is delta y upon delta x, remains constant as we change the value of the independent variable x by any amount and beginning from any value. The ratio delta y upon delta x is called the rate of change of y with respect to x. For any linear function, or its straight line graph, rate of change of y with respect to x remains constant. This constant rate is nothing but the slope of the straight line. For this reason, we often use the terms linear function, linear equation in two variables and a straight line interchangeably. 7.1.2 Absolute Value Function Absolute value of a number is defined as the magnitude of that number, irrespective of whether that number is positive or negative. For example, the magnitude of 100 is 100, while the magnitude of minus 100 is also 100. For any real number x, the absolute value of x, which is also known as modulus of x, is denoted as x between bars and defined as x between bars is equal to x if x is greater than equal to 0, x if x is less than 0. What we have explained here is a function known as the absolute value function, also known as the modulus. It can be written as y is equal to mod x. It returns as output only the non-negative values of any real number. This pairwise definition implies that if the real number is positive or zero, then its absolute value is the number itself. On the other hand, if the real number is negative, then its absolute value is the negative of the negative number, that is, positive. For example, 7.2 x is equal to 100, which is positive, that is, greater than zero, therefore, mod of 100 is equal to 100. Using the first part of the pairwise definition of the modulus function. 7.3 x is equal to minus 20, which is negative, that is, less than 0. Therefore, mod of minus 20 is equal to 
minus minus 20 in brackets which is equal to 20. Using the second part of the pairwise definition of the modulus function. An important application of the absolute value in economics is the elasticity of a linear demand curve. We always consider elasticity as an absolute value irrespective of whether that value is positive or negative. Elasticity of demand is the measure of responsiveness of demand of a good to changes in its price. More responsive the demand for a good is to its price, higher is the elasticity of demand for the good. The elasticity of demand is a negative number since the demand for a good is negatively related to its price. However, we always take the absolute value of the elasticity of demand. Page 35 The elasticity of demand is denoted as mod of ED, which ranges from 0 to infinity. Its magnitude shows whether the demand is perfectly inelastic, inelastic, unitary elastic, elastic or perfectly elastic. If mod of ED is equal to infinity, demand is perfectly elastic. If mod of ED is greater than 1, demand is elastic. If mod of ED is equal to 1, demand is unitary elastic. If mod of ED is less than 1, demand is inelastic. If mod of ED is equal to 0, demand is perfectly inelastic. 7.1.3 Nonlinear functions. If the mathematical formula relating y to x is not a linear equation, then we have the case of a nonlinear function. Some examples are y is equal to x square and y is equal to 1 by x. The mathematical feature that is shared by all the nonlinear function is that the ratio of change in y to the change in x, that is, Delta y upon delta x is no longer a constant and depends upon the amount of change in x as well as on the initial value of x. To be able to understand this, let us examine the graph of a nonlinear function y is equal to x square by first putting it in tabular form and then plotting the points. We have a table with 10 columns and 2 rows. Row 1 has the value x, blank, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1 by 2, 0, 1 by 2, 1, 2, blank. The second row has the values y is equal to x square, blank, 4, 1, 1 by 4, 0, 1 by 4, 1, 4, blank. Figure 18, graph of y is equal to x square. This graph has an x and y axis. The x axis has 6 points plotted on it from minus 3 to 3. The y axis has 7 points plotted on it from minus 2 to 5. The graph in figure 18 is not linear, but rather curved in shape. Specifically, it is curved in the shape of a U. The points on the graph are B, 2, 4 A, 1, 1 C, minus 1, 1 D, minus 2, 4 The important thing to notice is that the rate of change of Y with respect to x, that is, delta y upon delta x, changes as we increase the value of independent variable x by one unit. Which means that as we move along the curve from point say d to point c or from point a to point b. For a unit increase in the value of x, we can draw a table relating different rates of change for different initial values of x. The table has five columns and four rows. The first column, initial point, the second column, final point, 
the third delta x, the fourth delta y and the fifth delta y upon delta x. Row 1, initial point D, final point C. Delta x is 1, delta y minus 3 and delta y upon delta x is minus 3. Row 2, initial point C, final point O. Delta x value 1, delta y value minus 1. Delta y upon delta x minus 1. Row 3. Initial point O. Final point A. Delta x value 1. Delta y value 1. Delta y upon delta x value 1. Row 4. Initial point A. Final point B. Delta x value 1. Delta y value 3. Delta y upon delta x. 3. We can make the following observations. 1. Slope or inclination of the curve is negative, as indicated by the downhill curve in the second quadrant, and positive as indicated by the uphill curve in the first quadrant. 2. The steepness or the magnitude of the slope of the curve increases as we move away from origin towards right and decreases as we move towards the origin. It means that the curve gets steeper as we move away from the origin in either direction of the x-axis. 3. Value of the slope, that is, delta y upon delta x, changes from highly negative to highly positive and therefore increases as we move along the curve from left to right. Mathematically, it means that for a unit change in x, y increases more and more or decreases less and less for higher values of the independent variable. 4. Such a shape for which slope is increasing is called strictly convex to the origin. It means that these curves appear convex. 5. Instead of having segments with both positive and negative slopes, a strictly convex curve could either be just falling or just rising as indicated in figures 19a and 19b respectively. Figure 19a, downward sloping, strictly convex curve. Page 37. Here we have a graph. This graph has two axes, x and y. The x-axis has been divided into six parts and the y-axis has also been divided into six parts. The numbers run from minus 1 to 5. In this graph, we have plotted four points. Point A, which is 1,4. Point B, which is 2,2. 2. Point C, which is 3 comma 1 and point D which is 4 comma 1. If we connect all these points, we get a downward sloping strictly convex curve. Figure 19b upward sloping strictly convex curve. Here we have another graph. This graph is similar to the one we had before. In this graph, we have plotted four points. Point A, 1, 0 0.5. Point B, 3, 1. Point C, 4, 1.5. And D, 5, 4. If we connect all these points, we get an upward sloping strictly convex curve. Note that as we move from left to right, the rise or fall given by the height of the triangles for a given run is decreasing for the falling curve whereas increasing for the rising curve. What we have learned is the slope of graph of a non-linear function keeps changing as we move along the curve. Let us now examine a graph of y is equal to minus x square plus 1 by first putting it in tabular form and then plotting the points. 
here we have a table with 10 columns and 2 rows. The values in first row are x blank minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 by 2 0 1 by 2 1 2 blank The values in second row y is equal to minus x square are blank minus 4 minus 1 minus 1 by 4 0 minus 1 by 4 minus 1 minus 4 blank page 38 figure 20 graph of y is equal to minus x square plus 1 here we have a graph with two axes x and y the x axis has been divided into six parts from minus 3 to 3 the y axis has also been divided into six parts from minus 5 to 1. There are four points on this graph A, which is minus 2, comma, minus 4, B, which is minus 1, comma, minus 1, C, which is 1, comma, minus 1 and d which is 2 comma minus 4 the graph in this figure is inverted u in shape note that for this graph as well the rate of change of y with respect to x that is delta y by delta x changes as we move along the curve for a unit increase in the value of x we can draw a table relating different rates of change for different initial values of x as indicated in this table. In this table, we have 5 columns and 4 rows. The first column is initial point, second column is final point, third column is delta x, fourth column is delta y and fifth column is delta y by delta x. The values in first row are initial point A, final point B, delta x 1, delta y 3, delta y by delta x 3. The values in second row are initial point B, final point O, delta x 1, delta y 1, delta y by delta x, 1. The values in third row are initial point O, final point C, delta x, 1, delta y, minus 1, delta y by delta x, minus 1. The values in fourth row are initial point C, final point D, delta x, 1, delta y, minus 3, delta y by delta x, minus 3. We can make the following observations. 1. Slope or inclination of the curve is positive, as indicated by the rising curve in the second quadrant, and negative, as indicated by the falling curve in the first quadrant. This is exactly opposite to what we observed in the previous case of U-shaped curve. 2. The steepness or the magnitude of the slope of the curve increases as we move away from origin in either direction of the x-axis. 3. Value of the slope, that is, delta y by delta x, changes from highly positive to highly negative and thus decreases as we move along the curve from left to right. 
Page 39. Mathematically, it means that for a unit change in x, y increases less and less or decreases more and more for higher values of the independent variable. 4. Such a shape for which slope is increasing is called strictly concave to the origin. It means that these curves appear concave. 5. A strictly convex curve could either be just falling or just rising as indicated in figure 21a and 21b respectively. Figure 21a, downward sloping, strictly concave curve. In this figure, we have two axes, x and y. Both have been divided into six paths and run from minus 1 to 5. Here we have four points. Point A, which is 1,3.5. Point B, which is 2,3. Point C, which is 3,1.5 and point D, which is 4,0. If we join all these points, we get a downward sloping, strictly concave curve. Figure 21b, upward sloping, strictly concave curve. Here also we have a graph similar to the one we had before. Now, let's plot the points on this graph. Point A is 1,1.5, point B is 2,4.5, point C is 3,5 and point D is 4,5.5. If we connect all these points, we get an upward sloping, strictly concave curve. 7.1.4 Rectangular Hyperbola one special case of downward sloping and strictly convex nonlinear function is the rectangular hyperbola. It is of the form y equals a upon x. The coefficient a may be any real number other than zero. Moreover, the value of the function is not defined for x equals zero. Since division by zero is not defined. If a is a positive real number, then x greater than 0 implies that y is also positive. We will focus only on the case where a is greater than 0. Let us consider a graph of the function y equals 2 upon x for only positive values of x. This table has 10 columns and 2 rows. Row 1 indicates Values of x blank 1 by 150, 1 by 15, 2 by 3, 1, 3, 30, 300 blank. Row 2 indicates values of y equals 2 upon x blank 300. 30, 3, 1, 2 by 3, 1 by 15, 1 by 150, blank. Page 40. Figure 22, rectangular hyperbola curve. We have a graph with the x and y axis. We have a graph on which the x axis has been divided into 12 segments from minus 1 towards 11. On the y-axis are 11 segments from minus 1 towards 10. The graph represents the equation y equals 2 upon x. The rectangular hyperbola curve, as indicated in figure 22, has the following properties. 1. It never touches any of the two axes. Its value becomes increasingly insignificant as x increases, but never equal to zero. Moreover, since the function is not defined for x equals zero, it cannot have the point zero comma function of zero. 
since any point on the y axis has x coordinate equal to 0 and since y equals a upon x is not defined for x equals 0, therefore its graph can never touch the y axis but keeps going as close to y axis as imaginable. 2. The curve is continuously falling from left to right, which means that its slope is always negative. A negative slope implies that increase in x decreases y, and vice versa. There is a negative or inverse relation between x and y. 3. The curve is also becoming flatter, that is, less steep, as we move from left to right and increasingly steeper as we go from right to left. Therefore, our rectangular hyperbola is convex from below. It means that as we move to higher values of x, amount of fall in y value as x increases by one unit is decreasing. 7.2 Applications of Non-Linear Curves or Functions in Economics 7.2.1 Marginal Product and Average Product Curves are inverted U in shape. Marginal Product or MP of an input is defined as the change in output per unit of change in input when all other inputs are held constant. For example, MP of labor is the change in the total product, that is, output, when we increase the amount of labor by one unit. The MP curve is inverted U-shaped curve according to the law of variable proportions. Law of variable proportion says that MP of an input initially rises as more of that input is used. After reaching a maximum level, it starts falling with the increase in use of that input. This property of marginal product of labor makes its shape inverted U. Page 41 The average product or AP of an input is defined as the output per unit of input. AP curve also has inverted U shape. Both MP and AP are not defined for 0th unit of output. For the first unit of output, both are same. With the increase in amount of input, MP and AP both rise, but AP rises less than MP. After MP reaches its maximum point, it starts falling and intersects the AP. AP is at its maximum level when MP intersects AP. Now, the AP also starts falling along with MP curve, but MP curve falls faster than AP. So AP curve is also inverse U-shaped. This is indicated in figure 23. Figure 23, average product and marginal product curve. In this figure, we have two axes. The x-axis represents input and the y-axis represents output. The AP and MP curves are plotted here and, as we can observe, behave exactly like described earlier. 7.2.2 Marginal cost and average cost curves are U-shaped. Marginal cost, MC, of an input is the additional cost that a firm incurs to produce one extra unit of output. MC is a U-shaped curve. Firstly, MC falls as the requirement of input becomes less and less with rise in the output. But this is only for the initial period. After a point of time, the requirement of input increase to increase the output. So, the MC curve starts rising after reaching its minimum point. Therefore, MC curve is U-shaped. Average cost, AC, of an input is defined as the total cost per unit of output. Like MC curve, AC curve is also U-shaped. Both MC and AC are not defined as the zeroth unit of output. At the first unit of output, both of them are same. So the curves start at the same point. With the increase in input, both AC and MC fall initially, but AC falls less than the MC. After MC reaches its minimum level, 
it starts rising and intersects the AC. AC is at its minimum level when MC intersects AC. Now, the AC also starts rising along with MC. But MC rises faster than AC. So, AC curve is also U-shaped. This is indicated in figure 24. Figure 24, average cost and marginal cost curve. The graph has two axes. The x-axis represents quantity and the y-axis price. The two curves for AC and MC are exactly as discussed earlier, U-shaped. 7.2.3 Indifference curves are convex to the origin. Indifference curve, IC, is a curve joining all those points representing bundles along which the consumer is indifferent. All the bundles on the IC give equal satisfaction or utility to the consumer. The shape of an IC is convex to the origin as given in figure 25. This is because of the assumption of diminishing marginal rate of substitution or MRS which states that as the consumer has more of good 2, she will be willing to give up less and less of good 1 to acquire equal amount of good 2. Figure 25 Indifference Curve Here we have a graph with two axes. X-axis represents the quantity of good 1. Y-axis represents the quantity of good 2. We can see the indifference curve behaves exactly like described earlier. Page 43 7.2.4 Production possibility frontier is strictly concave to origin. Production possibility frontier, PPF, is a curve that represents the combinations of two goods that can be produced in an economy such that all the resources in the economy are fully utilised. PPF has a strictly concave shape to the origin as indicated in Figure 26. Figure 26, Production Possibility Frontier The x-axis represents good 1 and the y-axis represents good 2. The concave arc represents PPF. 7.2.5 Constant Elasticity Demand Curve has a shape of rectangular hyperbola. A constant elasticity demand curve is a non-linear demand curve that has price elasticity of demand constant at all the price levels. The equation of a constant elasticity demand curve can be given as P multiplied by Q is equal to K where P is the price of a good, Q is the quantity demanded of a good and K is any positive real number. The demand curve shaped as a rectangular hyperbola is given in figure 27. Page 44 Figure 27 Constant Elasticity Demand Curve Here we have a two-axis graph. The x-axis represents quantity and the y-axis represents price. We can observe a downward sloping demand curve representing the equation P multiplied by Q is equal to K. Test your understanding. Given here is the output of a broom making factory indicated in column 1 and the total cost TC incurred in producing brooms is indicated in column 2. Fill in the average cost AC and marginal cost MC in columns 3 and 4 respectively. Make their schedules on a 2D graph. What is their shape? I repeat, there are 4 columns. Column 1 represents the output, column 2 the total cost, column 3 the average cost and column 4 the marginal cost. In column 1 when output is 1, the total cost in column 2 is 50. You have to indicate in the corresponding row the average cost and the marginal cost, which are blank. When output is 2 in column 1, the corresponding cost in column 2 is 65. Average cost and marginal cost in column 3 and 4 are blank. 
when output is 3 in column 1. In column 2, the cost total is indicated as 75. Average cost and marginal cost in columns 3 and 4 are blank. When the output in column 1 is 4, then the total cost in column 2 is 95. Column 3 for average cost and column 4 for marginal cost are blank. When the output cost in column 1 is 5, then the total cost in column 2 is 130. Column 3 average cost and column 4 marginal cost are blank. When the output in column 1 is 6, the total cost in column 2 is 185. The average cost in column 3 and the marginal cost in column 4 are blank. There's a hint for you to solve this. You must recall that AC is equal to TC upon Q and MC equals delta TC upon delta Q. Module 7 ends here. Happy listening! You were just listening to this chapter. Subject Coordinator Dr. Jaya Singh Production Assistant Jagbandhu Jana Sound Recordist Batilang Lindo and Vikas Sangwan Artists Anandana Kapoor and Akash Ahuja Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary And presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India <laughs>